Hi, Greg. I'm Zoff from the upcoming. I mean, I know we spoke a little while ago, a couple of years ago, when we did a villain interview when you were working with Barantini. So it's lovely to have the opportunity to speak to you again um, on this new film. So obviously, sixth film in the franchise, A Rise of the Foot Soldier. And um, could you tell us a bit about where we see the story heading this time? What can fans expect from this new chapter? This is very, very different to the last five films. Um... Each one we try to keep fresh and different. And when I met Andy Loveday last year, we decided, he said to me, would you do another film? Um, and I said, yeah, you know what, I would. If it, if it, if we, how do we really make it different? Um, j just different. So we, we came up with the idea of revenge. Um, Signature, the distributor, went crazy. He had a working title with Tate, that's what it was called. And it was basically me on a mission to find find the murderers of of Kenny. Um, and you getting to know me and then taking him out of Essex and putting him in Soho, going against a whole different gang of villains. Um, so I went away. I went out to Cape Town to do a TV series. And in that interim time, Andy Loveday and Jason Mazza got together, wrote a treatment called Tate, as I said, gave it to Signature. They went mad on it. And then it got the green light. And, and then here we are, a year <laughs> later with a film coming out. But basically, it's a very violent tale of revenge. Uh, yeah. That's all I could say. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, I, I really enjoyed it, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, brilliant. what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> the girl. <laughs> um, obviously, we all know that Patrick Tate was a real person, you know, he's a gangster, pop the Essex boy. What is it about the character of Patrick Tate that kind of keeps you coming back to screen to portray him? And, and not just a pill of him for you, but kind of for bands too, do you think? Well, he's a fantastic character to play. Um... You know, there's not the... I had to be careful with this film because with what I did with Villain um, and even in Muscle and Violent Man, there was... there was Because the human side of it was so strong, the emotional thread, you know, of... of more so Villain, you know, with, of, the, of, the, of the... Just the emotional turmoil. I couldn't really... I couldn't put that into Foot Soldier because it would have been, what the... You know, because that's not Pat. That's like a machine. It's like a, you know, um, he's very resilient and nothing gets to him. So we couldn't put that in it, which was a shame because, um, but what I tried to do was just do a couple of little actions that were slightly redeeming qualities, you know, that just make you think, oh, yeah. And, um, and then the rest of it is just him doing what he does. Uh, and then me trying to make that as real as, as possible, you know. But I, I, I think Pat has he transcended this this world. And from the emails that I get and the messages that I get, and from the people who stop me in the street, they 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 loved what I've done with the character. They like me as an actor playing that part. So the two things have have really galvanized and come together, and it's worked, you know. Yeah. I mean, it really does. I mean, I think there's, it's got a bit of an edge over some of these British uh, crime sort of films. And it's very telling because obviously you're on the sixth film. <laughs> so what do you think is about the storylines of characters that kind of set it apart? Well, I, 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 to be honest with you, when you think about it, you know, we're all sort of bombarded with big American products all the time, all the streaming services, all the Marvel movies. And I do feel that you, there is a neglected audience because there's a lot of people who love they love British crime films, gangsters, this and that, because it's a it's a dying trend. And when you do get them and they're set here and it's got a good soundtrack and your characters are talking like London, you know what I mean? They the fellas love it. They really do. The fan base has grown and grown and grown and grown and grown. I get thousands of emails of people who are just discovering the franchise and they're so excited. They're like, they can't put it into words. It's amazing. But it must be nice because then they've got six to get through as well. They're not just stopping yeah. at the one. You know, it's brilliant. So you've obviously got a fantastic ensemble cast in this. You've got Jamie Foreman, George Reese, Sadie Frost, Tara Fitzgerald. You know, what did you kind of have a say in who you kind of wanted to bring into the mix to work with? And what was it like working with them? 
Well, Andy said to me, he said, you know, with the product, the, the films that you've done over the last couple of years outside of the franchise, you know, Muscle, Villain and The Violent Man, mm -hmm. it's the fact is because you've you've done critically acclaimed movies um, and people are taking you seriously now as an actor, you coming back to this and us going out with scripts and saying it's Craig, he's on his own, he's doing it. I feel that the, the actors of certain calibre feel comfortable in the fact that I know what I'm doing they know what they're doing and they know that we all care about what we what we do i know most of those actors um but the likes of phil davis sadie frost tara fitzgerald jeff bell you know these are all people jamie these are all people that i've grown up with and i admire you know and then we've got the young guns you know the george rosso's the you know the and the young kids that are coming through um i admire them all so to have them as a package it just gives the project more gravitas, you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, yeah totally. It's a proper film because these people care about what they do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And also, yeah. like you say, you've worked on brilliant films like Villain with Philip Barantini, Muscle with Joe Johnson, which you appear actually in this year's BFI at a Q&A, yeah. which I'm going to. Um, what do you look for in a script? Because I imagine you get at the scent an awful lot and you've got to kind of sift through them, see what works for you. Uh, what is it you're kind of looking for? Quality. That's all I'm looking for is quality, quality writing in the character and quality writing in the script, you know, in the little world that I'm in and the scripts that come to me, you know, because, um, and you can tell, you know, you can tell quite early, but uh, I mean, I've, 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 I've read so many scripts that you can actually tell two or three pages in if it, it just by the style of writing. Um, but yeah, if you're lucky enough to, because every now and again, I get sent stuff and it's, it's beautiful to read. You know, it's got a great story and then you, your character is is rounded and there's the human side of it. It's the elements that you're looking for. For, for me as a man, finding them next roles because it ain't easy. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. Easy. And also, obviously, you're working, you know, aside from those directors, you come back again and work with brilliant director Nick Nevin on this new chapter. Um, what was that like dropping back into working with him and that relationship? Does it just feel like really comfortable, really easy? Well, I really wanted Nick. Uh, we was lucky to get him. And, uh, you know, um, I just like him. He's a ball of energy. He's ahead of the game. He's on top of the material. He's very cinematic in his nut and his faults around the monitor. He's ahead with shots. And I felt very, very comfortable with him as our captain because it needed someone who was film literal, who was just lives and breathes it. And Andy's exactly the same. So that that them two together, um, you know, just makes me feel so comfortable because they care. That's the difference. You know, they care. It's like, you know, you, you go on some films and and some directors are not, they're not leading the way, if you know what I mean. Um, but I think Nick's done an incredible job on this. I mean, when I saw the trailer, it just blew me away. I've not seen the film. He showed me a few little snippets of scenes, and I just I just love what he's done with it and uh, the look of it, everything about it. Oh, it's brilliant. Yes. I mean, the soundtrack, I mean, when yeah. you get to see it all in its entirety, the soundtrack, you know, the so it's brilliant. I loved it. I really, really did. <laughs> um, were there any kind of standout moments for you on set? Anything in particular that you sort of thought, God, that was a really good day filming, that was a brilliant moment? Uh, I mean, every day is good. Because when you're, when you're number one on the call sheet, you're in every day. So, um, and it, and it's long hours, you know, it, it's a tough shoot. So I enjoyed every moment I went there, you know. Um, so I'm working with friends, people that I feel comfortable with, um, uh, and I'm excited to see the finished product. I really am. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you do the, the sort of hot, hard man, stone gangster very well, don't you? Um, and if you've been tempted with any other kind of roles, I mean, kind of, would you ever see yourself kind of stepping into like a period drama or a comedy or anything like that? Well, I'm currently in the number one Netflix show on the planet. On the planet, <laughs> which is One Piece playing a pirate, an old pirate, um, very emotional. You know, not a massive role, but a lovely role. And I was so pleased to be in. 
the show's gone through the roof. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I like to have, I like to do roles where there's, where I can put a little bit of me in there. It's, it's, you know what I mean? For comfort, for the comfort factor. Um, but, I, I, you know, at the moment, things are dream come true. Got a big yeah. series coming out at the end of the year on, on the BBC, Boat Story. As I said, One Piece is smashing it on Netflix at the moment. This comes out uh, in 10 days' time. Ooh, it's one of moments where you have a little look at the sun and you go, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, busy, busy time for you. Um, so can you tell me, what do you hope for you to kind of take away from watching this? I just, hope like? them, I just hope the fan base like it, love it. They're entertained and... Um, because it's all about them at the end of the day. I just yeah. want to entertain them and give them what, what they love about the franchise. They like to watch certain actors. Um, we're trying to keep it fresh, allow us to do that, you know. And I'm sure there'll be more. Hope so. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking to me. Um, and hopefully fans will love it as much as I did. It's brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks, Craig. Take care, bye.